augmented reality will one day be used by every child and adult today who uses a smartphone, and by holding your phone to your face, by outlining the current trends of the market, by researching on which companies are creating the future, you are investing in being ahead of the curve. AR let us see the real-life environment right in front of us, like rain falling, or dogs running but with a digital augmentation overlaid on it. For example, it could also be raining fruit, or the dogs could be running from a dinosaur. With advances in AR technology, these examples are not that different from what might already be available for your smartphone. Augmented reality is readily available and being used in a myriad of ways including as Snapchat lenses, in apps that help you find your car in a crowded parking lot and in variety of shopping apps that let you try on clothes without even leaving home. The difference between augmented reality, and virtual reality, is the level of immersion. Virtual reality is based upon a complete simulation of a real-world environment which the user can explore and interact with by means of a head-mounted display and input device. The user loses, or immerses themselves in this environment. But with augmented reality the user sees the real world but with the addition of computer-generated images which are overlaid on various objects within the real world. They are still aware that they are in the real world as compared to the full immersion in a virtual world. Augmented reality was first achieved by a cinematographer called Morton Heil again 1957. He invented the sensorama, which delivered visuals, sounds, vibration and smell to the viewer. Then in 1968, Ivan Sutherland invented the head-mounted display as a kind of window into a virtual world. In 1975, Myron Kruger developed the first virtual reality interface in the form of VideoPlace, which allowed its users to manipulate and interact with virtual objects in real time. Steve Mann a computational photography researcher, gave the world wearable computing in 1980. The first properly functioning R system was likely the one developed by Louis Rosenberg in 1992. This was called Virtual Fixtures and was designed to compensate for the lack of high-speed 3D graphics processing power in the early 90s. Augmented reality is achieved through a variety of technological innovations, these can be implemented on their own or in conjunction with each other to create augmented reality. They include general hardware components, like the processor, the display, the sensors and input devices. They include displays, while a monitor is perfectly capable of displaying AR data there are other systems such as optical projection systems, head-mounted displays eyeglasses, contact lenses, heads-up display, virtual retinal displays, ITAP, spatial augmented reality and handheld displays. They include sensors and input devices like GPS, gyroscopes, accelerometers, compasses, RFID, wireless sensors, touch recognition, speech recognition, eye tracking and peripherals. The majority of development for AR will be in developing further software to take advantage of the hardware capabilities. Games aside, there are as many uses for R in our everyday lives as there are ratatas in Pokemon Go. Here are just a few examples. Enhanced navigation systems use augmented reality to superimpose a route over the live view of the road. During football games, broadcasters use R to draw lines on the field to illustrate and analyze plays. Military fighter pilots see an AR projection of their altitude, speed, and other data on their helmet visor, which means they don't need to waste focus by glancing down to see them. Neurosurgeons sometimes use an AR projection of a 3D brain to aid them in surgeries. At historical sites like Pompeii in Italy, AR can project views of ancient civilizations over today's ruins. Already mobile phones are such an integral part of our lives that they might as well be extensions of us. It will almost certainly see major advances in the much hyped but still little seen, Internet of Things. 
UX designers in the AR field will need to consider the questions of how traditional experiences can be improved through AR. The future will belong to AR when it improves task efficiency or the quality of the output of an experience for the user. This is the key challenge of the 21st century UX profession. The big three are the most likely to succeed in creating an augmented experience that can reach the general population quickly by marketing to their brand evangelist demographic. Targeting super fans means less need to persuade the mainstream consciousness to consider the new tech as the early majority who hop onto the technology bandwagon will follow right after techies. The same could not be said with certainty for other companies, especially recent startups tackling the world of tech for the first time. Magic Leap, founded by Aroni Abovets, is estimated to be worth over $4.5 billion USD, and yet they have not released a single product. The secretive startup has been creating buzz for years, hyping their first mixed reality product letting investors in for sneak peeks and previews here and there. Let's watch the demo video. Everest conquered, the New Zealander Edmund Hillary got his first mail and congratulatory telegrams from George Lowe, a fellow countryman and expedition colleague. Us 35 miles from Kathmandu, capital of Nepal, Hillary and Ten Singh were welcomed and congratulated by their fellow members of the expedition. Upon realizing the very real threat of artificial intelligence and where it could go, Elon Musk has founded Neuralink, a neurotic company looking to uncover the secrets of communicating with the human brain. What will start as a medical aid to those with degenerative brain diseases, like Alzheimer's, through providing patients with extended memory, can one day become unlocked output potential for humanity. If you are looking for an app that will help you find your car in a lot, look no further than Find My Car Smarter, which uses a combination of Bluetooth and GPS to nail down your car's location. The free version of the app uses satellite positioning to save your car's location in roughly 5 seconds, which it then stores on your phone's memory to save power. When you're stationary and located within a half-mile area, such as home or work, the app remains in a suspended state, only waking up periodically to scan the area for Bluetooth devices. When you start looking for your car, the app pulls up the location of your parking spot, shows how far you are from it and how long it's been since you left it, and syncs all that information via Dropbox. Ink Hunter is the app you should use when deciding on a tattoo and where to put it. 
The app lets you try out pre-made tattoos, as well as your own designs, and they can be oriented in whatever position you like and placed on any part of the body. The app previously only supported black and white tattoos, but its latest update added support for color tattoos as well, meaning you can get a better picture of what the design will look like before you make it permanent. Wallamy lets you leave hidden messages in various locations around the world that can only be read by other people using the Wallamy app. When using the app, you can take a picture of a nearby wall, street, or sign, then use the in-app drawing and painting tools to create your own special messages. Messages can be made private, too, so that only friends using the app can see them, or they can be made public for everyone to discover. If you're ever at home or in an abandoned building and want to play a horror game on your phone, Ghost Snap has you covered. Inspired by found footage movies like The Blair Witch Project and games like Outlast, Ghost Snap tasks you with snapping images of ghosts while listening for disturbing sounds and encountering even more disturbing creatures. There's no way to win this particular game, it's simply a matter of surviving for as long as you can.